Alright, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be doing something, um, fall related with pumpkins. So, well, let's get going. Alright, well, that was a weird intro. Um, so let me just show you guys what we're going to do uh, with a couple examples that I have and I'll show you guys right now. So here we go. So over here, we have a couple examples of stacked pumpkins. Now, when stacked pumpkins, you kind of put one on top of the other and basically the biggest one is on the bottom and then the smallest one is on top and then it kind of makes kind of like a little tower. It's kind of cool like this. And uh, basically, I've made a couple examples throughout the years. Uh, it started out as a bookmark project, so we kind of did it in a small version, and we tried to make sure that each face was different. And then following that, we kind of conserved paper by making it a half sheet, and then we kind of made stacked pumpkins like this with like half circles stacked on top of each other, and then it evolved. So this is the most recent one. So this is one from last year, and then we used construction paper. But since we're in remote learning, we are going to change it up, so we're going to adapt it so you only need a piece of paper, something to draw with, and coloring, as always, it's optional. So let's get going. So I'm going to put these to the side, just so you guys can take a look still. So maybe, hopefully at an angle, you can probably still see them. Let me just slow this up a little bit. Maybe move this bookmark all the way over there. You guys can see, still see that one. Maybe I can overlap this one. There we go. All right. You should be able to still see these on your screen, which is great. Now. I'm gonna make sure that my paper is vertical just like this. And as always, I highly suggest you do this in pencil first. So if you make a mistake, you can always erase it. But for me, I'm gonna draw it directly in marker because it's a little bit easier to see on camera. So anyways, here I go. So first as, uh, first as always, make sure you put your name in the back and let's get started. So first step, um, I wanna do my first pumpkin and it's gonna be the biggest one on the bottom. You have a couple options here. So if you want to do exactly what this person did wall, uh, way long ago, I like to go from the corner and then just go straight down. And that way um, it's just hiding the corner, kind of like a selfie, kind of like, like popping from the corner. I don't want to do that personally, but if you want to do it, you can. But for me, I kind of want to make sure that it's in the middle uh, down below and I can still see the whole entire pumpkin. So that's my goal. So what I'm going to do in order to draw this pumpkin, I am going to kind of create a little curve on the top and then I'm gonna put the stem just so I can visualize where everything's gonna be. So there's my stem of my pumpkin. And then since this is gonna be the biggest pumpkin, it's gonna have to be the biggest one. So bigger is better. So I'm gonna try to go as big as I can without reaching the edges. Okay. And there we go. Ta-da! So now we're not gonna draw the inside lines of the pumpkin quite yet. I might wanna do that with an orange marker or orange colored pencil. Or maybe I don't want any of those lines at all. So anyways, I'm going to leave it the way it is. Okay. Next step, I'm going to add the next pumpkin. The next pumpkin is going to be way smaller. So in order to do that, again, add the stem. Okay. Once you add the stem, add the next pumpkin. It's going to attach it like that. And obviously we can't see the rest of the pumpkin because it's going to be on top of this one. It's called overlapping. So I'm just going to overlap, or sorry, underlap, I should say, because the front one's overlapping. And there we go, add the next pumpkin. And if I want to add a third pumpkin, which I highly suggest, you can do one right here. There we go, a little bit wider, sometimes a little more round. And if you want to add another pumpkin on top, you can. For this example, I'm just going to add three. Um, the good thing about adding more than one pumpkin or more than three pumpkin is that you can make more faces, which is pretty cool. So I've seen people do different types of faces. Uh, but for me, for this example, I'm just gonna do three for now. Um, so there's that. So if you want from this point, if you don't want it to be floating uh, in midair, uh, some people like to add some ground. So I'm just gonna add like a line for the grass or where the ground starts. Um, if you wanna do that, you can. Uh, sometimes, sometimes people emphasize that it is ground by creating little points of grass. So maybe one cluster here, one cluster there, and I'm just using little zigzags to symbolize grass. If you want to put some on the actual top uh, line right there, you can. And I'm done. All right, there we go. So if I want to make it a nighttime scene, you obviously don't really want like puffy white clouds like that. Uh, maybe you do, I don't know. But uh, for me, I'm going to keep the, back the background blank for now. Uh, let's work on the faces for right now. So I have a couple options here. That's why I kept these over here. If you want to do a smiley face, if you want to do a cute face, if you want to do a cat face, nothing's restricting you from doing anything that you guys want, right? So you can do any face you want. For me, I'm going to do a classic one. So maybe I will do uh, the same type of mouth. So 
like this. Maybe I want a tooth on the top. And then I'm gonna go down and connect it. There. One with a tooth, uh, triangle eyes. So maybe I wanna put one right here, one right here. And to make it look really happy, instead of making a line straight on the bottom of these triangles, I'm gonna curve it a little bit, just like that. Yeah, it kind of gives it a little more different effect to it. Uh, if you want to do a nose, you can. I'm, I don't think I want to. Uh, with that said, I am going to add a little more effect to it. Uh, maybe I'll take a orange marker, like I said before, add some lines going kind of around the pumpkin like this, and down below, or sorry, I should say down on top like that. So I'm going to keep this orange marker out so I can do it for the rest of the pumpkin. So let's try to figure out some more faces. Um, I've seen people do this kind of face over here. Yeah, you guys can see that. I've seen this really big smiley over here. And there's tons of other ones right here. And I'm going to hold this one up really close to the camera you guys can see. So this one's really cool too. So there's a couple options here. I'm going to do something a little more creative. Maybe I want to make this into a cat. So what else? I want to do that. So here I go. Cat. I'm going to add one ear over here. Whoop. One ear over here. Whoop. And then maybe I'll add a tail right here. And then in order to make a cat, I'm gonna make a triangle nose. And then a number three sideways. And then some teeth. And then maybe I will do tiny eyes like this. Or how do I do cat eyes? Maybe like this. Triangles. That looks pretty creepy, right? <laughs> but my point is, is that you can kind of do any type of pumpkin you want. There's no rules on what kind of face pumpkin you can do. Pretty cool, huh? All right, next pumpkin. I don't know what I want to do. Hmm. Hmm. Why don't I make this pumpkin kind of bored? <laughs> so I'm gonna draw two lines for the eyes. And I'm gonna put one eye over here, half circle, another eye over here. And then the mouth is gonna be very close to the middle of the face. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of a, not a frown, but kind of like a slight curve down like that. And then the bottom lip like that. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right, let me add my orange lines as well. There we go, top and bottom. To symbolize it, that it is a pumpkin. Now, if you want to, uh, pumpkins do have vines. If you want to add vines on them, you can. I've seen kids kind of add their own if they like. So I'm just gonna add maybe one or two here and there. That was not what I meant to do. <laughs> there you go. If you want to add a leaf on it, you can. Ta -da, like that. Here's another one. All right. So the basic of my uh, the basis of my drawings are done when it comes to the stab pumpkin. Uh, now all I gotta do is color if I want to, um, or I could add more detail in the background, make it more spooky, maybe a little more fall, add some leaves in the background. You can basically do whatever you want. So at this point, um, I think I'm gonna start coloring. So since I did a lot of the majority of it in marker, I think I might go back with some crayon to make it a little more detailed. So here I go. Here's my marker. Uh, sorry, my crayon bin. And I think I'm gonna start off with the background. So why don't I start adding my clouds actually? I'm gonna try to copy this one. So here's my clouds. There's one cloud. Maybe I'll have one cloud behind this uh, pumpkin and maybe another cloud right here. Like that, maybe another cloud right there. All right, and again, clouds are white. So I'm gonna leave those blank. All right, with that said, I might as well make my sky Hmm, what can I make my sky really interesting? Maybe I can like make it a little more spooky with like purples and blues and greens maybe. Uh, let me do the ground first and let's see what happens. So why don't I do my ground with a little bit of this light green right here. Like that. And then I'm going to do some of that light green on this side. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find a medium green right here. As I go lower. There we are. I don't want to add a shadow in the bottom of this pumpkin. I like how I did over there. Um, I want to discuss that in another project, but if you do want to add a shadow on the bottom, that's what it looks like. But um, I don't really have uh, an opportunity to share with you guys how to do shadows at this time. So anyways, we'll, we'll leave that one out. But if you want to add it, go ahead. So let me add another one. Is this the next screen or did I just do the screen? Oh, I did not do the screen. Here is my last screen. The reason why I'm using two different types of greens is if you guys remember from the Van Gogh, project I did with you guys a couple weeks ago, if not last week, um, it kind of gives it more of a more interesting look. 
if you guys use more than one type of color in the same spot. So if I just did this with just one type of green the whole entire way, it'll look cool, but it wouldn't look as good as using three different types of green, so it looks way better, right? So anyways, let's add some more detail. Why don't I make all the insides of these pumpkins yellow? Give it more of a glow. There we go. And this isn't quite a yellow. This is uh, this color is called green yellow. <laughs> Gives it more of a spooky look, I guess. Can't really tell on camera, I don't think. Um, but it's a little bit of yellow, but not quite yellow. There we go. Might as well do the inside thing here. There we are. All right, those are only the spots I can find for the yellow to go. Um, why don't I do the sky next? I think the sky deserves to be done next because I do want to save the pumpkins for last because pumpkins are my favorite. So why don't I do this? Why don't I do the bottom part or the bottom portion, uh, kind of like a light green, or sorry, light blue, just like this. And then as I go up, as I go up, I'm gonna change to maybe a uh, medium blue. Here we go. And I am going side to side to make it different from the grass because the grass I went up and down, up and down on my crayon. But from my sky, I'm going left to right. I can try to stay inside the lines <laughs> the best that I can. All right, let me try dark blue. I'm gonna blend in with the other one. Best of my ability. Not really. I'm kind of like Russian. <laughs> oh, I went over the leaf. That's okay. Happens all the time. All right. So let me just go down this direction. All right. There we go. All right. Next up, let me just go a tad bit higher, so I have room to blend with the purples. So let me do this purple first. Ooh, that's an eerie sky right there. Let's uh, move along with more purples going up, more purples down here, and then let's try to find a darker purple to finish it off. Hmm, not quite. Here we go. Uh, hmm. How about this? Eh, not quite what I wanted, but it'll do. Not quite what I wanted, but it, it'll do. All right, I do have some leaves on the branches, or sorry, the lines, so I might as well finish those off by pressing super hard. Like this, like that. I think that's all I got, right? Uh, why don't I also add some brown to the stems of my pumpkins? There we go. Should I make the ears brown? Yeah, sure, why not? Why don't I make the ears brown? Cause there's gonna be a lot of orange coming out soon. And why don't I add the tail brown too? There you go. Maybe I add the tip of the tail a different color. Maybe I keep it white, I don't know. All right, next up is the pumpkins. With the pumpkins, just like how the sky and the grass is, I am gonna use a couple different uh, oranges to make it a little more interesting. So why don't I choose this tan color and this regular orange? I think this is, um, let me see. Macaroni and cheese, cool. So let's use the macaroni and cheese color and then uh, this uh, peach color. Oh no, it's apricot, kind of like peach. And I'll go from there. So why don't I make this peach color uh, a little bit more towards the face of each pumpkin, just like this. Just a little bit. So on each face, I have a little bit of an apricot or a peach look to it. Oh, I broke the crayon, no! It happens, broke the crayon. All right, there's the faces done. Putting my broken crayon back. And let's go back with this mac and cheese crayon and do the rest of the pumpkin. And when you're coloring over this marker, if you decide to follow exactly like how I did, uh, it gives this cool effect where you can kind of still see those orange lines. Looks pretty cool. All right. My pumpkins are looking happy. I definitely see the effect of the lighter orange in the middle and what it's doing. Makes it look really good. Here we are. And we're almost done with this picture, guys. We're almost done. Almost, almost. I gotta make sure I don't break this crayon either. <laughs> I don't wanna break this crayon. 
a, a tr super cool trick. If you want to press harder with the crayon without breaking it, just hold it closer to the, the tip of the crayon. So instead of holding like this, if you hold it like this, you will definitely break the crayon. If you hold it closer to the tip, the crayon will have a least likely chance to break. So now I'm going to press harder, see what happens. Ta-da! See? Crayon's not breaking. Knock on wood. <laughs> there we go. It takes practice to learn how to do pressure sensitivity art, but um, it's working out pretty good for me, thankfully. And there we go. This is my finished product of stacked pumpkins. Anyways, I think it turned out pretty good. I've done this for the past eight years, if not nine, and it's turned out pretty good. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is the finished product. If you want to make it into a bookmark form, all you gotta do is find a piece of paper that's this size. Uh, but otherwise, a blank sheet of paper works just as fine. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this project, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.